Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how we can set up screenshots in, in your level and using the editor to create high quality screenshots. Uh, this is what we used for our Uh, just touch on uh, creating screenshots using this tool so we need that tool and then we want a we want a camera in our scene so a misc camera which gives you this camera object let's place it here let's rotate it so it's looking you see this box around it is the direction it's looking in so we want that there as well and we want to create a new sequence in our track view. So if we go down here in our track view, <coughs> excuse me, we need to add a sequence. So we'll call this uh, promo screenshot. And then we want to add this camera as well. So we're going to add selected node and that's added our camera. And there's one final step we need to do is also add a director node so we add this and a director node is just basically um, what the track view is is going to be looking at so we have a director node we need to add our camera into it so we want to click add keys and select it on the director field here and then click back on to move keys so we can select this node here and here because it's on our director camera field with this node you have the key properties on this side on the right we want to select our camera which is default name by camera 3 you can rename the cameras if you want so we've got the camera selected so now if I go to display and I go to switch to camera you can either click on selected camera object, which is the one that's selected in the viewport, or now with this track view set up with a director node, we can click on sequence camera. Sequence camera just opens up, well, views through the camera lens that we have just created. Um, what you probably might notice is some of the distant stuff isn't rendering. And now we need to change a value on our camera. So make sure you have your camera selected. There's a value called far Z and it's only set to quite a low value right now. And that's how far the camera can see into the distance and how far it will render stuff. So we want to change that. Uh, let's change it to 3000. So now you can see more of the distant terrain and everything else and it's because of this value here. So if you get that issue, it's the far Z value. Um, the, also another one is near Z. And that's when something's very, very, very close to the camera. And sometimes the camera clips through it and you can see inside the object. If you change the near Z value, you can fix that clipping issue. Um, so now I've got my camera set up, I've got my scene. Uh, let's move this onto my other screen for a second so I can see more of the viewport. I do have the camera still selected. If I want to tweak the angle or the position of this camera, the easy way to do it is to view it through this. 
And then click, let's click on our move tool and we have our X, Y, and Z values here. And we can just click and drag to move them or you can click the arrows if you wanna slightly move them. It's super useful if you're trying to set up a camera and you wanna get you know the perfect shot you can rotate it as well. So we go to our rotate tool and rotate the Z, rotate the Y. I don't like rotating Y, but you can do if you want some angle on your shot. And also the X. So it's a really good way of just tweaking your camera position to what you want. Um, Next, we want to add a character. Let's, let's, let's add a character. So we want someone in the middle of our shot posing. So what we need to do, always save it, always save it. <laughs> what we need to do is go to Entity, and then we want to go to AI, and there's one called Dummy Player. So we want to get him, and he'll do this silly animation, but this will be our actor in our scene or our model in our scene and right now he's naked and we want to add some clothes to him so we want to go to open character tool which is just here and i think you can also open it from from here yes yeah. so view open character tool okay so by default you won't have this open like this uh, to find your characters, you need to go characters, objects, and then characters, players, and then there's also male and there's also a female folder. So we're going to go in the male folder. We'll do, we'll do a male for now. And I want to select uh, our default naked character. Um, you might also have some of, some of the ones I've already set up here. I'm not sure if that comes with the mod SDK, but there are, also, there are some that are already fully clothed characters. But we're gonna create one from scratch. So I wanna select humanmail.cdf and we want to right click it and we wanna click save as and we call that humanmail, I'm gonna call it tutorial. Tut oh, I'll just call it tut one my brain is not screwed on today very well but I'm trying okay so now we've created a copy of the human male here so we want to make sure we double click that that we have that one selected so here on the right hand side we have all the different points on our character where we can apply some clothing so I'm going to clove this guy from scratch. Let's give him some trousers first. So we're going to find the legs. And then we've got the geometry here, this geometry field here. And right now it's on underwear skin, which is the default underwear. So we don't want the default underwear. We want to go up a folder. And now we're in the legs, so it's game SDK, objects, characters, players, male, legs. And we want some trousers, so we want some long trousers. We get the wanderer pants, and I want the wanderer pants dot skin and click open. And it has the default material applied to it, and it's put it on my character for me. So if I open up the materials, I can change the color. So we have a few here. So maybe I want a green one. No, let's have a tan one. We're in the desert. So it's changed the color of those trousers. And so that's, that's one way to put clothing items on and also to change the material as well. So we need to change the torso one. And I want, I want a different torso instead of a naked one. So let's go for long. Let's get the leather jacket, because I like the leather jacket, and click open. And again, we can go to and change our material. 
and you can change it to whatever material you want. Maybe I want a black one. So you can go through all these different ones here. There's feet as well, and feet, feet are shoes. So you replace feet with shoes. So we'll swap out the feet model. Uh, I want the steel toe boots. They're quite cool. And we open that one. And again, we can change the material. I'm going to keep it as default one. So quite like that. Maybe we want. Maybe we want a. a yeah, maybe we want a, a gun on his side or a gun on his back or something. So we want stow waist. I believe it's stow waist. Now finding guns is another story. I think it's objects. Oh, baseball and gun. Oh, hoy. Weapons, here we go. <laughs> Find it eventually. Maybe I want a HK. I believe, I think it's the character model we need to apply here. Let's, let's find out. Let's do this together. No, it's not that one. I think it's CDF. Yeah. So now he has a gun on his side. Uh, that might not be the correct field to put it in, but that's that's how you can kind of put weapons on. You have stow waist. I think it might be stow waist, this one. Or maybe it's the on ground model. Nope. Doesn't like me today. That's how you uh, can attach a gun on someone. And I think maybe There's a stow secondary as well. So maybe we can get like a rifle on our back. No, nope. I think that's actually the correct one for the pistol. I apologize if I'm making mistakes here. <laughs> Cause I'm kind of just doing this as I go along. I should know better, but there we go. Okay, the stow secondaries is actually the correct one. So we've got it on its side. I think it jostles a little bit. If you have like an animation, it will kind of jiggle. I think if you notice that in the actual game, when we're when you're running, some of the weapons kind of jiggle a little bit. So it already has those parameters on those. Uh, that's another secondary. We want a primary. That's what I wanted to do. So stow primary. Yeah. And then you've got a rifle in the back. You don't have to have that, but you can do. Uh, also, I could also put some hats on him. I don't know why that's default with hair. Hopefully it doesn't remove his eyebrows. I think it's on uh, head. No, it's not head. So sometimes you have to kind of just explore through these files to find the right one that you want. I, I always forget. <laughs> I don't think it's actually, hats are probably generic actually. Yeah, because there's some things that the female model and the male model share. So hats is one of them. So hats is in generic. And we've got all our hats. And what we can put on him. Let's put a cowboy hat We're in the desert. Let's give him a cowboy hat. Let's change it to, let's change it to leather. So now he's got a cowboy hat. I think that will do for now actually. You can explore all these different uh, attachments here and have a look at what you can add to, to your dress character. Now, if you see here, this is a little clipping issue. 
so some of the longer sleeved uh, clothing or the longer sleeve the, the longer trousers could have some clipping issues with the the model underneath so what we want to do is hide this particular model underneath so in this case this is the arms so if i open up the arms tab but there's a there's a tick box for hidden i just click hidden and now that is not clipping anymore it's a minor thing but um when you've got him in an animation pose sometimes it's more prominent than than you see in this view here so if you do get some clipping issues this is how you can hide them and it's the same with the legs as well well we got the legs attachment for this but there's also uh legs upper and upper mid and lower mid and these ones ideally i want to hide those but unless i've got shorts on you want to unhide these but in this case i've got long trousers on i don't want any clipping i can hide them just like that so we've got to address character now we need to save him so right click save and sometimes it'll ask you when to close this as well so i'm gonna click yes and just give it a second and i'm just gonna save the level as well so now that we have our character dressed we need to apply it to our dummy player so I've got the dummy player selected and there is a model here that we need to change. So we need to open this one and we need to find the one we just created, which is human male to 01. And I click apply and immediately we don't see any change. That's because we need to scroll down here and there's a, there's a button called reload script. So if I click reload script, Usually it does it. If not, something didn't save. Oh, you just love this, don't you? Okay. Sometimes it doesn't want to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the level keep it as is I'm going to close the editor and reload the level again and see if that fixes it okay I'm back um, I apologize <laughs> for some reason our dummy player isn't working so I do have a solution though so we're going to remove our dummy player which is quite difficult to select. If you hold down spacebar, it's easier to select him. So I'm going to remove him. What we're going to use instead is a geom entity. Now, if we locate where we saved our character, which was in objects, characters, players, and mail, and there he is. He should be in here with all his clothing on. So I, I usually use dummy player and that worked in uh, my version of the editor, but in the mod SDK, it doesn't seem like it's working. So we're gonna use a job entity class, which is probably better in hindsight, it's probably better because um, you can actually see which characters you're selecting here. Uh, so jump entity and find the folder root and there he is or you can uh, or you can search for him in the little filter here so whatever file name you called it it'll be there okay so now we've got our character dressed up and we've got him placed in our scene we need to add an animation to him or a pose so we're going to add an animation or a pose to him. We need to have him selected first. And then we need to add selected node. And that will add our guy. Now by default, you don't have the animation um, nodes. I don't know what you, the animation track uh, on 
display. So we need to right click on our, on our, our on the person we just added. Excuse me. Then we go add track and animation. Now we have the animation track here. We need to add a animation. So we can add a key. I'm gonna add it there at the beginning. Go back to our move keys tool so I don't add any more keys and select it. And then we can go to, we can click the, uh, the key here and then add animation. So if we have the key properties, we wanna open an animation. And in here you have oh, all the animations we use for our character in the game. So if you think of uh, an animation that you want, you can filter it. They're all named different things, so it's, it might be a bit difficult to find something. But some of the best ones to use are some of the ones we use for our screenshots, which are filtered by, call it promo. So we go mail, and then we got all these different poses, which are pretty cool. And so I can open one of them. As you can see, it's not changing just yet. We need to put it on loop. And let's put it in place as well. So loop it in place because we're doing a screenshot. I'm going to change my camera back to default so we can see him in his pose. So you got that pose. You can switch different poses. So there's ones where it looks like he's holding a gun. So you can place a gun in his hand. So I kind of like this one. And he's supposed to have a rifle in his hand. And I can show you how we can sort of do that. It's kind of fiddly, but we can do that. So now I've got him in a pose that I want him to do. Um, if you didn't want to use these ones and you wanted maybe uh, run. So stand, run forward. That's with a rifle or something. Run forward throw. There is quite a lot. So I do recommend that you kind of um, go through some of these and see which ones you like yourself. Um, if you don't like the animation phase that he's in, you can scrub through here. So maybe I want him in this position. You know, I would scrub through the animation. So that's not so hard to do if you select this, this purple um, scrub timer, you can scrub through your animation and select a pose that you most prefer. But for this one, I'm going to use the promos. That's their design for screenshots. Where is he? There we go. So I'm going to move that away again. So I want to put a gun in his hand. Just going to be kind of a little bit fiddly. If I'm going to find. Hmm. What do I want? Oh, shotgun. I don't think it's called shotgun. It's called something else. Yeah, we got this one. This one's cool enough. So I want to align that to him. I want to put it in the local view. And that. I want to rotate it. And kind of fit it into his hand. As best as I can. I'm gonna be a bit rough on this one. I'm not gonna get it absolutely perfect, but maybe you want to. And I can slow down the camera loads and see if it's all in the correct position. Now that I have him with a gun, I can select him and the gun and go group and group. I'll just keep it the default name. And that way I can have him as one object and if I want to adjust where he wants to be, I can do. So there we go. We've got our character. Make sure his feet are on the ground as much as possible. I don't like, I kind of like there, that's good. We all want other things in my scene as well. I want the F100 truck. 
So I can go to Entity and I can select the F100 truck. And I can put the F100 truck in. Maybe I want that in the background there. My screenshot. So I'm gonna go back to display, switch camera to our selected uh, sequence camera that we set up. And I wanna select the camera again and tweak it. And you can select it from the track view as well. If I double click on it, now I have the camera selected and I can move the camera like this. I prefer moving it like this. There is also, I can't remember the way of doing it. I think it's, there's a really cool way of doing it with using the viewport controls. Matt showed me it. <laughs> it really changed my life. I can't remember what. Ah, it's here. And so where it says perspective, I right click on it and I can select the camera I want. So camera three, which we're already on. So now it's on camera three and then right click again. And then we want to disable lock camera movement. So click that. I believe that's it. At least I thought it was. Ah, and then we need to, I think we need to click the record button in track view as well. Yeah. So to do that, right click here, select the camera we want, unlock camera movement and make sure this record button is turned on. And then we can freely move the camera using the viewport instead of using down here. But I mean, this is better if you want to do like tiny little movements, but if you want more of a flexible, I want to be quick kind of camera, yeah, you can do that. Uh, maybe I want it so my character is like so. I mean, that'll do for now. And then I'll show you some sweet camera tricks we can apply to this. So I've got my camera position I have one. I can turn off record now. I don't want to move it again. And then <clears throat> I'm going to open up the camera. I want to change FOV, which is how, you know, well, it's the FOV, field of view. So I'm going to add another key. And then change this value maybe to 40. Well, maybe a bit higher. 45? Seems pretty good. Maybe I want some depth of field applied to this as well. So I can add, so I can right click on my camera, add track, and there's depth of field. And then I can add another key for my depth of field. And then I can change the blur amount. So open up the depth of field one, change the blur amount. Maybe I want that on five. Now it's super blurry, <laughs> but it can also change the range of the focus. So focus range, maybe on 30. And then focus distance. Maybe I want the gas station and the character in focus and then everything else not in focus. You kind of just play around with these values, focus distance and focus range. Let's higher that. There we go. <coughs> and so I've got the gas station in focus, my character in focus and then everything else in blur. Um, I can lower that a little bit more, maybe one. You don't have to have it on, but it's a neat little feature. Maybe you want like a close up of an item or something, you can have some depth of field on it. And it's really cool with lights as well. So I've kind of got my setting, my camera set up, my character set up, and whatever else I want in the scene set up. Uh, I want to change the lighting. So terrain, lighting, and then I'll drag this out for you. <clears throat> and then we can change the time of day. 
Let me find something that's pretty suitable. I don't know. I think that's kind of cool. Let's just leave it like that. And maybe I want to add some additional lights into the scene. I can go entity. And then I can go lights. And I can have a light. Let's switch back to our default camera. Maybe I want to highlight my character a bit more. I can add a light in the scene. And you can get like a kind of like a photo shoot lighting set up with this as well. Um, let's cast shadows. Let's change the color a bit and get a bit more of an orange tone maybe. That one's kind of an orange, and then I'm gonna move it on the XY and have a second one. Maybe that catch some highlights on our character as well. Just to make him look a bit more. Then you can really play around with this and have like a really cool lighting setup. Because our. Um, our box art image was all rendered using this track view as well. And there was like hundreds of lights set up for that one. So you can add like lights to your scene. I can switch back to the camera. And I got these lights on my character. And there's some errors, it's like a floating gun and stuff. You can remove that as well in the, in the uh, character tool again. If it's something you don't like, you can tweak it in the character tool again. Um, but yeah, so that's how we got our character in then. So we've got some lights in, we've got our camera set up. We've got some cool effects like depth of field. Um, next is we want to render our, our screen. We want to render this as a high quality 4k image, for instance. So one thing we want to do is we want to hide the helpers. We want to hide this information as well. So this H will hide helpers. And then this I will hide our information as well. So you can click it a couple of times. So you still got that there. And click it again, it's gone. Now we want to go in our console. We want to put ISM cones hide and press enter. That will hide all the item spawner cones in your scene as well. So if you do have item spawner cones, that's how you hide them. Um, I'm going to double click on the console to open up the console variables and we want custom res and we want the width I think 3840 and the height is 2160 I think that's 4k am I wrong I keep forgetting these so now the viewport is rendering at a 4K image. We want to change the aspect ratio. So when you render this out, it doesn't, um, it has the correct aspect ratio, which is here. See, so it says ratio. I'm going to right click on ratio. We want it six by nine. And I just moved it to my other screen, but there you go. So now it's on a six by nine. It's got the resolution of this resolution 4k um there's some other things we can add so maybe anti-aliasing so maybe we want a high anti-aliasing mode so if we change that anti-aliasing mode to four we get some cleaner ed edges on some of our geometry um there's also other things you can change in here like uh view this ratios so view distance, so view distance ratios. So maybe we don't want the LEDs to kick in. This is a screenshot after all, maybe we want it to look a bit nicer. So maybe I'll put that on a hundred. So if you could just see there in the background what it was on 460, you see that cone is a bit, it's getting culled by the distance and some of the smaller objects are. So if I change the view distance ratio to something much higher, you those objects render further into the distance. And there's 
all sorts of different parameters for view distance. There's also one for um, vegetation as well. And But you just have to search for view distance or view dis. So I got my scene set up. I've got the graphics set up using the console variables. I need to take a screenshot. So uh, get, I think it's get screenshot, or get screenshot. And we just want to put, make sure my mouse is in there. One, and then zero, and enter. And let's see. Hopefully that saved it. So we go in my mod SDK uh, root folder. It should be a user, screenshots, and there it is. I have my screenshot which is at a very high resolution and it looks pretty decent. So to get screenshot, it's all get screenshot or you can search for it, get screenshot. You want to click, you want to change it to one, the value to one, press enter, and then the value to zero, press enter. And then it will be in your mod SDK root folder, and then there'll be a user folder. In user, there'll be screenshots, and you have your screenshot. So I hope that really helps with setting up a scene and setting up and using track view uh, and to create your own custom screenshots for your level or your scene. Um, there are other things you can use for uh, track view. Like I said, you can make cinematics with track view. There is a pretty good CryEngine document how to um, record and move cameras. It's really easy to do. Like if I select my camera and I want to go on my camera and I click record, I have my starting position and then I can go to my end position and I can move the camera to here, stop recording. And that's recorded a simple camera movement. So it's a really cool way of uh, making cinematics and making flyby cameras if you wish is to use uh, the track view. And it kind of works like just like any other uh, animation package. You, you can record cameras and you can also have animation set up on characters and have them moving around. It's a lot more involved, but there are uh, documentation online that you can look up and um, learn about how to do that. Maybe if there's enough demand, maybe I'll show you how I did some of my uh, video recording sequences. But yeah, that's that's uh, all there is to it to create a screenshot. And thank you for watching. I hope that really helps you out to create some really stunning screenshots of your levels and scenes. And uh, I'll see you later. Thank you.